Hi everybody, another great sorting algorithm to learn is insertion sort. Just like selection sort earlier, it's not a great algorithm because it happens to be fast or does some sorting better than any other algorithm we might run into, but it's great because it also mimics how we as humans would sort unsorted data. And one of the best ways I've found to explain how insertion sort works is to describe how we would sort cards from an unshuffled deck of cards because the approach we'll use to sort the cards in our hand is very similar to how insertion sort actually sorts values as well. So here I have a deck of cards, you know, it's a deck and there's, you know, I didn't do any shuffling beforehand and it's just in its unordered state from when I probably used it last. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick the card at the very top and I have no idea what that card actually is going to be. It's a four. And so I'm gonna hold this four up right now. What I'm gonna do next is pick another card. My goal is to actually have the cards be arranged in order from decreasing to increasing order. And so I have a four, next number is a 10. So I'm gonna place a 10 direct just after the four. So you, have, you see four, then you see 10 immediately afterwards. And so I'm gonna go back to the top of my deck of cards and pick one more card. This one is a king and king is the largest value here. So I'm gonna go ahead and place the king at the other side of, of 10. So you see four, 10 and the king. And for now let's ignore the actual, the color or type of the card itself. Let's look at the actual values themselves. So I'm gonna pick one more card and this one is an ace. And so the way I look at it, ace is like the first number. And so if I had to sort it in the collection of hands that the cards that I have, it's definitely less than the king, less than the 10, less than the four. So it's gonna go at the very beginning of the cards that I currently currently have. So now I have ace, I have the four, the 10, and the king. Let's get one more number. And this one is a 10, and it's actually a tie. So I'm gonna, go, it's gonna put the 10 next to the current 10 that we currently have. Next is a jack. And so this one is, you know, it's gonna be less than a king, and but greater than 10, so it's gonna go just in between both of these cards. So the, the J goes right here. I'm gonna do one more card, and this one happens to be a queen, and the queen also is going to go just between where the king and the jack is right now. So what I have here is a sorted collection of cards. What I have here in my hand in this deck is essentially an unsorted collection of cards. And with each time I pick a card, I happen to place it in its sorted order. And the interesting thing is that as I'm adding more cards to it, I'm getting more and more of a sorted collection in my hand, but I have no idea of what cards are currently in my unsorted deck. So the next card, for example, have to be a 10. And this 10, we already have a few 10s already. So I'm just gonna place it just where the, where the 10s are already. And I'm gonna place it right here. But I am building up my sorted collection from a completely unsorted set of information. And I do my sorting as I'm trying to figure out what where it belongs in my sorted collection of information. So what works for cards, and I'm assuming this is how many of you are playing cards as well. So if I look at my hand, I can, I can see all of them. As you pick up a card, you put them in sorted order. This approach is very similar to how insertion sort works as well. And so in the following few minutes, you're gonna learn more about how it works by me switching, not from talking about cards, you know, I might allude to it as part of my explanations, but we're gonna look at numbers and more specifically the size of bars to help explain it more in a computer science-y, more technical kind of a way. It's gonna be fun, so let's get started. Now, before we get to a detailed look into insertion sort, if you want to learn more about data structures and algorithms in general, take a look at my best-selling book, Algorithms, Up to the Beginner's Guide, available in physical bookstores, as well as online bookstores in both paperback and Kindle and other digital editions. Links to all that in the description below. And now, let's get back to our regularly scheduled programming, which is to learn more about insertion sort. So we saw how we would use insertion sort to sort cards a few moments ago, but I want to take it a more general direction. Let's say what we want to sort are these values that we see here. And these values are going to be determined by the size of the bar. So the taller the bar, the larger the value, the smaller the bar, the smaller the value. So I figured I'll, I'll you know, switch things up a bit from usually talking about our, our collection of numbers into doing something different like what we see here. So these are the values we wish to sort. This is very similar to, again, like our unsorted you know, deck of cards that we had earlier. And we have no knowledge of what these values are. We just know that we have a bunch of values that we need to sort. And so the, the very beginning, I'm going to say that all of these values are unsorted. Let's just go ahead and claim that they're all unsorted values. And so from our algorithm's point of view, we have no knowledge 
of any of the unsorted items. All we know is that there's some items that exist, but we don't know how many they exist or what range of values will be stored because from how insertion sort works, that's not the important part. What's really important is that we start with the first unsorted number, almost like picking the first card from the top of the unsorted deck of cards. And then we start building out a sorted collection from this moment. So at the very beginning, we just start with the first unsorted number, which is going to be the, the first value in our collection right here. And we're just going to mark it and call it an active value. And I'm going to call it an active value for a particular reason, because by giving it a name, we're going to be able to specify how this value is different than all the other values we'll be seeing in a few moments, especially the sorted values and the unsorted values. Whenever we have an active value, we ask ourselves the following question. When I look at the sorted items, am I in the right spot? When I look at the sorted items, am I in the right spot? Now, at this moment, you're gonna be like, wait, what's a sorted item? Where are our sorted items? For the very first value, we treat as special and mark it as a sorted item automatically. It's just like picking up the first card from a shuffled deck. You know, it's the first card. It's already you know, in the right location, so it's already sorted. So we're gonna go ahead and mark this item as sorted. And now we can kind of break apart our entire collection into two groups. One is a sorted group, which is almost like the, the cards I have in my hand. And then we have the unsorted group, which is the, the deck of cards that we don't know much about. So we have one sorted item and a bunch of unsorted items right here. So what we do next is to pick the first unsorted item, which is the quote the top item in our deck, and we're gonna start analyzing this particular one. So I've selected this item, it's now our active value, and we can kind of see from where it is that it's already larger than our one item that we have right now, and our goal is to have the, the bars go from smallest to tallest from left to right, and so it's already in the right position, so we'll just say it's sorted and then continue on from here. Next, we pick the first unsorted item as our new active value. And for this one, we can kind of see that it's not taller than the item that we have in our sorted collection at the end. It's not taller than the item we have at the beginning either, which means that it's probably the, the smallest item that we have so far. So we're gonna go ahead and place it at the very beginning of our sorted region of values. And so you can see that we move it to the very beginning. And so now our new sorted arrangement looks as follows. We have three sorted items in order from smallest to tallest, and then we have our collection of unsorted items. Notice that as we are continuing to go through our insertion sort algorithm, the number of items we're dealing with in total does not change. The number of items we had at the very beginning is the same number of items we see right now. What is changing though, is the balance between how many of the items are sorted and how many of the items are unsorted. So you can see now we have three sorted items, and then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven unsorted items. And you're gonna keep seeing this number shift all the way until we have no more unsorted items. Our entire collection is considered to be sorted. So now let's go faster. You know, next item, you know, is gonna be the, again, the first unsorted item. It's gonna be your active value. This is by far the smallest value that we have so far in our sorted collection. So we go ahead and move it to the very, very beginning. And so now we have that item at the beginning. So our sorted collection grows, unsorted collection grows a little smaller. So you might be able to sense a pattern emerging from all of this. And this pattern is our insertion sort algorithm. Step one, pick the first item from our unsorted region. Mark this item as active is step two. Step three, we compare its value, the active item we just picked, with the items in our sorted region to identify where to place it. And in step four, we place our active item in the right spot within a sort of region to maintain the order we're looking for, which is smallest to largest. And so here we are again, back to where we left uh, left off. We have the our sorted items that are now in sorted order. Then we have our unsorted items going from there. So as we keep going through the list, you know, the next unsorted item, which is the, the first item right here, it's definitely the tallest item of the items we have in sorted. So it automatically becomes the last item in our sorted region and it's our, currently in its right spot. And then we just keep repeating this process over and over again by going to the first unsorted item equivalent of the top item card in our deck, and then placing in the right location in a sorted region, which is equivalent of the hand of sorted cards we have in our deck as well. And as we keep repeating this process, you will then go from an unsorted collection of information to partially unsorted and sorted information to fully sorted information 
like what we have here where all the bars are now going from smallest to tallest or shortest to tallest and you now have a fully sorted collection and so when we look at the performance characteristics i mentioned at the very beginning that insertion sort is not the fastest or the most efficient algorithm out there for sorting information and that's kind of validated by what we're seeing here right now where the the best case scenario for time complexity is linear it's the case where all the items are already sorted from smallest to largest so each active item just happens to be in the right spot relative to all the sorted items that are currently there that doesn't happen often but if it does great congratulations you're in big o of n time location worst case and average case are n squared and we'll talk about why that is the case space complexity it's constant we saw earlier that we never really change the number of items that we are dealing with between sorted and unsorted we just shift kind of the goal post that marks the boundaries between where sorted and unsorted live so our space complexity does not change independent of how many items that we're currently throwing into the our input to be sorted and so the reason why it is n squared in the average and worst case scenarios is that we still have to cycle through every item going from the very beginning to the end because we have no concept of which items are are the smallest items or the largest items when we have our unsorted collection of data we just know we have an unsorted collection of data it isn't until we mark an item as active explore it and look at it we know what's going on so we already have one linear path that we are making and the next linear pass happens in that once we have an active item, we need to find out where to place it. And typically that means we go through every item in our sorted region to find out where we need to go, which means that for every item, we're also backtracking and examining every item we'd already sorted earlier. And that takes linear time as well. So you have one linear operation to go through their entire collection of unsorted items. Then you have another linear operation for each item to see where it is to fall in the sorted collection and that becomes n squared. And so to learn about how to actually use this algorithm and create it and write it, my article insertion sort on curve.com goes to more detail because showing JavaScript is not very convenient in video form and we really can do a whole lot with it also. So go here, check out the article, scroll down a bit, you'll see the, the JavaScript implementation of how this works in, in great detail. And the easiest way to find it is to just go to Google, type in Krupa, search for insertion sort after that for the keywords, and you will see my results coming at the very beginning. Now, overall, there are better sorting algorithms that you can use. And unless you're sorting a small amount of numbers or you really take advantage of its sweet constant memory usage, which also applies to selection sort, you wanna stay away from insertion sort for most real world cases as well. So stay away from it, you know, it's bad news essentially. And so if you have any questions about how insertion sort or anything works in general about everything you've learned about data structures or algorithms, or just have a question about technology and computers in general, one of the best places to ask is at the forums at forum.crypt.com where I and others would be very happy to help you out, answer any questions that you may have. And of course, if you want to be notified of new videos or new content to create, like, comment, and subscribe to be able to tell your friends and your enemies all about new things that you are exploring. Sign up for the newsletter to be to see some items in your inbox on business topics, technology topics, and design topics, which are the three topics I tend to talk about the most. Follow me at Krupa on Twitter or X to be able to just be get more bite-sized updates on things that I'm discovering or playing with in real time. I try to keep it very tech focused or design focused for the most part. So you'll get a more you know, rapid dose of information from me there. And lastly, I write a lot of books, not just on data structures and algorithms, but other front end topics and programming frameworks and languages. So definitely check those out and link to all of them below as well. And with that, I will see you all next time.